The white oak group is quite diverse, and some of our most distinctive eastern oak species belong to it. One super cool species that holds a record, which we will get to in a bit, and is also known for its tolerance to certain climatic conditions, and awesome growth habit is bur oak, Quercus macrocarpa, an oak mainly of the Midwest and the Great Lakes region that grows naturally in a variety of places, including bottomland and wet woods, sandy flats, dry uplands, and prairies. Bur oak is most often found growing in limestone or clay soils. Mature size will average around 70 to 80 feet tall with an equal spread, but bur oak can get up to 150 feet tall in optimum conditions and with enough time. It grows with a single stout trunk and has a spreading, rounded crown composed of rather large branches. If you love learning about our awesome eastern oaks, like the bur oak, pretend that like button is a ripe bur oak acorn and bury it like a squirrel. Bur oak has large leaves that can vary in shape, but usually are from 6 to 12 inches in length and 2 to 6 inches wide. The leaves are generally broadest toward the tip and have 6 to 8 lobes, with the lobes near the tip often merged into a semicircular shape that looks like half of a patty pan squash or a bonnet head shark's face to me. This enlarged tip is separated from the next lower set of lobes by a conspicuous deep sinus that can cut nearly to the mid vein. The upper leaf surface is dark green, sometimes with a grayish cast, and the lower surface is pale green to somewhat white and sparsely covered with tiny hairs. The leaf base is noticeably wedge-shaped. Fall color will vary in shades of brown and yellow. Bark is dark gray in color and is divided into flat, wide, scaly ridges by deep vertical furrows. Bur oak twigs are distinctive because they have corky wings growing from them. The acorns of bur oak are unmistakable. They are the largest acorn of any oak species in the United States and Canada. Acorns are roundish, from one to two inches long, and nearly as large in diameter, and have a large cap that encloses from one half to nearly all of the nut. The cap is covered in rough, hairy scales and has a fuzzy fringe around the edge. Acorns ripen and drop in the fall and are sought out by a wide variety of wildlife. Key features to look for when identifying bur oak are the distinctive leaves, the wing twigs, and of course that huge acorn with the fringed cap. Acorns of species in the white oak group are an important food source for a variety of mammals, including deer, black bears, and squirrels. Acorns of species in the white oak group are generally lower in bitter tannins than those of oaks in the red oak group, which makes them more palatable to wildlife. If you know how tannins got their name, let me know down in the comments. Many species of birds also feast upon white oak acorns, especially wild turkeys, woodpeckers, jays, and waterfowl. The foliage of young white oak sprouts is a preferred forage of deer, and white oak leaves of all ages are eaten by over 400 species of caterpillars. Similar species that may be confused with the bur oak are the white oak, Quercus alba, which has more uniformly lobed leaves with no distinct waist and a hairless lower surface, smaller acorns lacking a fringed cap and wingless twigs, and the post oak, Quercus stellata, which lacks the rounded, fused lobes at the leaf tip and has a distinct cross shape to the leaf, smaller acorns without a fringe cap, and also has wingless twigs. I've made many mentions to looking at leaves in this video when identifying oaks, and you may be thinking, what do I do if it's winter and the leaves have fallen? Well, lucky for us tree nerds, oaks tend to hang onto their leaves for quite some time, and even once most have dropped, there are usually still a few on the tree. Of course, they may be way up in the air, probably out of reach. You could look around under the tree and find a leaf that has fallen, but if you want to be sure you have the right leaf, it's best to look up in the tree. This is where a great pair of binoculars comes in handy, like these Vortex Diamondback HDs, which will allow you to see leaves way up there, or if you want to check out something awesome that you come across. It's also a good idea to have a field guide with you, like this Princeton Field Guide to Trees of North America, in case you need to sort some finer details out. You can find both the Vortex binoculars and the Princeton guide on the Backyard Ecology recommendations page, along with all the other equipment and books that we use. I will put a link to it in the description. Bur oak could also be called the bur oak as it is the most cold tolerant of our native oaks. Although it grows much smaller and shrubbier and produces smaller acorns at the northern extremes of its range. Both its common name and its scientific name come from its large and impressive acorns. 
The burr in bur oak refers to the acorn's resemblance to a chestnut burr, and macrocarpa translates to large fruit. It has wood that is considered excellent in quality, and it is often cut and sold simply as white oak. Due to bur oak's excellent form and reasonably quick growth, it is used to some extent as a shade and specimen tree in places with enough room for them. Bur oak is one of our most distinctive eastern white oak species, and as distinctive as it is, there is still sometimes confusion between it and its cousin, the white oak, Corcus alba, which you can learn all about in this video, and be sure to get out and explore nature in your backyard.